At this video, I will explain to you what I learned about climate change. Before we get into the topic, I will explain a little bit about atmospheric structure. The atmosphere has four distinct zones of contrasting temperature, which result from difference in absorption of solar energy. The layer of air immediately adjacent to the Earth's surface is called the troposphere. Earth's atmosphere is composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 0.93% argon. The remainder less than 0.1% contain, contains many small but important trace gases, including water vapor, carbon dioxide, and ozone. The stratosphere extends from the tropopause up to about 50 km. This layer is vastly more dilute than the troposphere, but it has similar composition except that it has almost no water vapor, nearly 1,000 times more ozone. Ozone is a pollutant near the Earth's surface, but in the stratosphere it serves a very important function. Ozone absorbs certain wavelengths of ultraviolet solar radiation, known as UVB. This absorbed energy warms the upper stratosphere, so temperatures increase with elevation. Above the stratosphere, the temperature diminishes again in the mesosphere, or middle layer. The thermosphere begins at about 80 km. This is a region of highly ionized or electrically charged gases heated by a steady flow of high-energy solar and cosmic radiations. In the thermosphere, intense pools of high-energy radiation cause electrically charged particles, or ions, to glow. We call this phenomenon the aurora borealis and aurora australis, or northern and southern light. No sharp boundaries marks the end of the atmosphere, the density of gas molecule decreases with distance from the Earth until it becomes indistinguishable from the near vacuum of interstellar space. So now we're getting into uh, characters change in the Earth uh, climate. The climatologists have studied many different sources of evidence to understand long-term climate change. The main drivers in this long-term change are known as orbital cycles because they result from shift in the Earth's movement or Milankovitch cycles after Serbian scientist, scientist Milutin Milankovitch, who first described them in 1920s. These cycles influence how close the Earth is to the Sun and control how much of the Sun's energy we receive, which in turn affects the Earth's climate. Long-term climate shift can be seen in sedimentary rocks as temperatures and rainfall shifted over millions of years. There are three factors that cause natural climate's variability. The first is Milankovitch cycles drive long-term climate change. Second one is ice cores contain oxygen isotopes used to reconstruct past temperatures and atmospheric composition. Geologists and climatologists use many lines of evidence to reconstruct past climates. One is examining the width of three rings, which let them count back to find dry, drought stress years or humid years of fast growth. Another is remains of plants, pollen, or microscopic organisms in lake beds and marine mud. Over really long time periods of millions of years, Geologists use fossils and rock types to infer what the climate must have been like. Ice cores are especially important because they provide detailed records reaching back hundreds of thousands of years. How? Every time it snows, small amounts of air are trapped in the snow layers. El Niño is one example of an ocean atmosphere oscillations. Uh, that's the third one. Uh, on a shorter time scale, there are oscillations or periodic shifts in oceans, currents, and atmospheric circulation over years or decades. One important example is known as El Nino or southern oscillations. 
The retention of long wave terrestrial energy in the atmosphere is called greenhouse effect because the atmosphere, loosely comparable to the glass of a greenhouse, allows sunlight to travel through while trapping heat inside. The greenhouse effect is a natural atmospheric process that is necessary for life on Earth. Greenhouse gases is a general term for trace gases that are especially effective at capturing the long wavelength heat energy from the Earth's surface. Water vapor is the most abundant greenhouse gas, but concentrations vary, and human inputs are modest, so it is not a concern like other GHGs. Carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and variety of fluorine gases are among the most effective greenhouse gases. So, um, what's the solution being developed to slow climate change? The first one is zero carbon emission. Ultimately, negative emissions is a global goal to avoid compounding climate effects already committed by past emissions. Second one, each participating country establish voluntary emission reduction goals and those goals and progress towards them must be publicly visible. Third one, reduction plans submitted thus far are not sufficient to keep warming below 2 degrees Celsius, so plans must be revised every five years. Uh, for the last one, climate finance is necessary. Advanced economies agreed to strive toward donation of $100 billion, $100 billion per year to a green carbon fund to support low carbon development in emerging economies. Thank you.